Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, this is Osama Sayyid from Islam after Ahmadiyya Today's video is uh, It's covering the fa uh, the uh, failed prophecy Mirza Ghulam's failed prophecy regarding his marriage to uh, Muhammad I Begum uh, One of the one of the, the prophecy is worded here in Majmu'a uh, Ishtiharat Volume 1, page 102. Uh, obviously, it's in Urdu, so it's been translated into English. Where Mirza Ghulam says, uh, quote, This relates to a prophecy which you have published in an advert or notice in July 1888. That's 20 years before Mirza Ghulam died, by the way. 20 years before he died. Uh, and he goes on and says that Allah Ta'ala has given a prophecy as a sign for the opposition and rejectors of this humble one. This humble one is Mirza Ghulam. He refers to himself as this humble one. And it is that one of these is a man named Ahmad Beg. If he does not give his eldest daughter to this humble one, so if he does not give his eldest daughter to Mirza Ghulam, then he will die within three years or close to that time. This is Ahmed Beg will die within three years. Uh, and the person who marries her, who marries Ahmed Beg's eldest daughter, will die within two and a half years. And lastly, that woman will be from among this humble one's wives. So therefore, he will marry Ahmed Beg's eldest daughter. Now, this daughter is called Muhammad Begum. Her name is Muhammad Begum. Um... Obviously, the uh, central point, I think, is obvious, is that it's a failed prophecy, which means that he didn't, Mirza Ghulam never married Muhammad Ibega. Uh That's the the absolute, you know, if I can put it in a in a, in a shortest, in the shortest, the less uh, least words possible. Yes, he failed. That prophecy failed. He didn't marry her as as he was supposed to, according to his prophecy. But there are a lot. There are a lot of details. And um, there's a lot to talk about regarding this prophecy, mainly really because, unfortunately, the Ahmadiyya organization, uh, rather than just be honest and admit uh, that this is a failed prophecy, they do their best to try to wriggle out of it, just like all the other failed prophecies. There are many failed prophecies, which inshallah uh, will be covered in our videos. They tried to wriggle out of this, this failed prophecy uh, by claiming certain things, which obviously I will state uh, throughout the video. Uh, the bottom line is, did he marry Muhammad Begum? This is the crucial point. This is the, the prophecy. This is like the, 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 the meat. You know, you've got all your garnishments. You've got, you've got all the, the decoration on your plate. Let's get to the meat. The meat is he was supposed to marry Muhammad Begum. He never married her. And he said this is a prophecy. And he always states in actually quite a few areas in his books that prophecies are the touchstone of his truthfulness. So the prophecy, prophecies uh, are supposed to be fulfilled to prove that Muhammad, uh, sorry, Mirza Ghulam is a truthful person and he actually is a prophet and he's the Mahdi and all this stuff. He says it many, many times. But the Ahmadiyya organization, uh, they declined to... Uh, address that fact and they keep saying oh you're just nitpicking you're just looking for negatives the fact is it failed we're not picking anything we're not nitpicking anything this is actually straightforward it failed they're the ones who actually nitpick by trying to make it out as if the prophecy was fulfilled by going into small little details uh, here and there and try to say to you oh it was partially fulfilled or something like that that that's nitpicking right there we are not nitpicking here we're saying very straightforward was it fulfilled no it wasn't and uh, as I say, this Majmur uh, Shtiharat, the quote I just read there, volume 1, page 102, this was stated uh, around 20 years, approximately 20 years before Mirza Ghulam died. So you can understand that for 20 years, the last 20 years of his life, um, he had been waiting for the prophecy to be fulfilled that he would marry Muhammad Begum. 20 years and it never ever happened. And, you know, I don't even need to tell listeners out there 
that if Allah, I mean, he's saying that Allah told him this, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something to happen, that is as simple as a marriage. I mean, it's not that complicated. It's not like we're called, we're, we want a country to suffer an earthquake and, you know, everyone inside it dies or something. Not, not something like that. Just a marriage. You know, 20 years wasted. You know, it didn't happen. So, obviously we're covering quite a, a variety of uh, material here. Um, Ahmed Beg, who is Muhammad Begum's father, he initially actually approached uh, Mirza Ghulam, uh, uh because uh, they're actually they are actually related. Mirza Ghulam and Ahmed Beg are related, and Ahmed Beg needed Mirza Ghulam to perform some sort of, some acts, uh, sign a few papers here and there. I think for regarding some land which Ahmed Beg. Uh, wanted to uh, take, you know, just for himself and obviously remove his his family members. And uh, Mirza Ghulam was supposed to, I believe, uh, sign sign some document or something like that on behalf of a relative who was missing for many years. And um, uh, this is uh, Mirza Ghulam obviously uh, didn't straight away agree to do this, but he said, I'll, I'll pray to Allah and all this stuff. And that he, you know, Mirza Ghulam said, I don't like involving myself in doubtful things and all this kind of stuff. So obviously he's coming across like as if he's honest and really, you know, like, uh, you know, really thoughtful person and all this kind of thing. But then he comes back afterwards and says that God has told me that basically I, you have to let me marry your daughter, your oldest daughter. And uh, obviously then I will sort out all your land all your land, your requirements, anything you need of me so that you can get your land and finish this whole land issue. I will do all of that as long as you let me marry your daughter. And uh, this is the, the gist of it. And uh, Ahmed Beg, basically the father of Muhammad Begum, he, when he visited Mirza Ghulam, uh, Mirza Ghulam wrote in uh, page 571, uh, of Aina Kamalat Islam, page 571. Mirza Ghulam wrote that uh, Ahmad Beg was ill. He had stomach. He had a stomach problem. He had a lot of pains in his stomach um, from taking medicine, and that he breathed like a choking person, which means that he obviously had some sort of breathing issue, and his health mustn't have been too great. You know, for him to have a breathing problem, he's, he's, he's breathed like a choking person. This is from page 571, Mirza Ghulam wrote it himself. So what the point of me trying to say that to you is that it's clear from this that Ahmad Beg already had very poor health. Very poor health. He wasn't a man in in great health. He, he didn't have, he, his body wasn't in great condition. So that the significance of this is that when Mirza, uh, I'll follow through obviously and I'll explain to you what Mirza said to him uh, And you, you'll understand why I've said this to you, I'll bring it back to you anyway And uh, in, I believe, was it page 572? Yeah, 572, the beginning of the, another, you know, he writes the prophecy of him having to marry Muhammad Begum And uh, he writes that Ahmad Beg if Ahmad Beg refuses to let Mirza Ghulam marry uh, Muhammad Begum, that Ahmad Beg himself will die within three years. He will die within three years of Muhammad Begum, uh, Muhammad Begum's nikah, her, her marriage. So Ahmad Beg is supposed to die within three years after Muhammad Begum gets married to someone else. And her husband, Muhammad Begum's husband, will die within two and a half years uh, after the nikah. And uh, I've got here, we have, uh, Mirza Ghulam actually goes into slightly, uh, he gives more points, more details here. It's another uh, page now, it's in Aina Kamalat Islam, uh, Rahani Khazan volume 5, uh, the page is 324 to 325. And uh, Mirza says, Allah will make this woman, which is Muhammad Begum, into a widow and will bring her towards me. Then he goes on to say, then Mirza goes on to say, 
My prophecy does not contain one, but six claims. One, that I will be alive until the nikah. Uh, number two, that the girl's father, Ahmed Beg, will surely be alive until the nikah. Uh, you know, obviously Muhammad Begum and the other man, not Mirza Ghulam. Point number three, then after the nikah, the father's death uh, will, uh, will occur, uh, but not longer than three years after nikah. For the, the fourth point is that the husband's death will occur within two and a half years. Uh, the fifth point is until until Mirza marries Muhammad Begum, she will stay alive. So Muhammad Begum will stay, stay alive until Mirza marries her. So she won't die. Uh, the last the sixth point is that uh, Muhammad Begum will be married to Mirza Ghulam. Obviously... You know, these points are quite hideous, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, oh, that I will be alive until the car, then the girl's father will be alive until the car. You know, all this kind of thing, it's it's really petty, and it's just like trying to make a big, a big, a more points out of nothing, really. It's a simple fact, you know, you're supposed to marry her, and that's the end of the, the end of the, the matter, really. Um, in uh, the Aina Kamal to Islam, in, in pages between pages 566 and 573, where Mirza writes about uh, uh, Ahmed Big being ill, you know, his condition, you know, he breathes like a choking person and he has stomach problems and all that. And also, the pro he's written the prophecy there as well. In Ar it's all in Arabic, just to let you know, it's not in Urdu, just in case you can't read Arabic. It's all in Arabic there, pages 566 to 573. And in the Arabic as well, it doesn't just say that Mirza says that uh, Ahmed Beg will die within three years. He says that he will face a lot of masaib, you know, a lot of disasters in his life. Really, I mean, uh, it doesn't mean a bad thing. It means that like a really seriously harmful things like disasters will happen to him. And then at the end of it, he will die within three years. So you can really see for yourself, I mean, it's really shocking um, that Mirza Ghulam, you know, you're supposed to preach, you know, when, you, when you're talking about these kind of things, I mean, it's not like the guy was, it's not like Ahmed Beg was trying to fight him and kill him, it's not like he was on a battlefield, you know, that you have to like wish death on him or something. You know, you're trying to make sure you get married to his daughter and so you tell him that you're going to have a disastrous end and then you're going to die within three years. This is unacceptable, I mean, this, this shows a lot about Mirza Ghulam's character. You know, it's not just, this video is not just to tell you that he failed the prophecy. The prophecy failed and, you know, uh, it's not just about that. It's about showing Mirza Ghulam's character. There is even more, there are even more things that I'm going to mention. Me and my colleagues, you know, we've worked hard to uh, translate and uh, procure all of these uh, writings so that we can do this video today. I will uh, carry on and explain to you more things here. We've got, uh, at the moment, we have... Um, I'm going to read some from Tathkira. This is Tathkira in English, by the way. The Tathkira in Urdu, the pages in, in Urdu will be... Uh, tathkira, yeah, to, in Urdu it's page 158 to 159 in the Urdu one. In the English one, it's page 122 and 123. And this, these, uh, these dreams that were put in Tathkira... Um, they were on, the first one is on the 25th of July, 1892, 1892, so this is uh, 16 years before Mirza Ghulam died, and this dream, he says in his book, this morning at dawn, I saw myself in a house where my wife, Mahmoud's mother, and another, his wife, Mahmoud's mother is in brackets by the way, and another woman were sitting. I, f I filled a white water skin with water and carried it into the house and poured the water into an earthen vessel. When I had finished, the other woman came over to me suddenly wearing a beautiful red dress. I saw that she was a young woman and was clad in red from top to toe. The cloth was possibly knitted. Uh, it's possibly knitted or like net. In Urdu, it's, uh, it's, it, the wording is it looks like net or see-through or something like that. I thought to myself that this was the woman for whom I had advertised, but she appeared to me to have the features of my wife. She said 
or perhaps she thought, I have arrived, and I responded with, May Allah cause her to arrive. Then she embraced me, and I woke up. Allah be praised for all this. Now this is this show that Mirza Ghulam dreamed of Hamidi Begum, and it's not just a regular dream. She's wearing, you know, I'm sorry when you say beautiful red dress and all this kind of thing. You're not, you're not, you know, you're talking about beauty, and this isn't like a, a respectful dream, just a simple, uh, you know, if you see someone in your dream. No, he's talking about her looking beautiful and all this kind of thing. She was, she's not even his. You dream of your own wife or something, that's okay. When you have these sort of dreams, generally, you know, you you shouldn't actually be writing them in these books. And sometimes they're from shaitan as well, because some dreams people get, you know, they're, they're evil dreams. And this can't be a good dream, you know, when you're dreaming of her wearing a beautiful dress. And it's it's either knitted or net, so it's, so, it's sort of see-through or something like that. And, uh, you know, this, this is not, uh, I'm sure you'll agree, this is not really a good thing for someone who's going to be a prophet. And someone claiming to be the rejuvenator of Islam to be saying, or the dream, you know, to, I mean, if he had the dream, he shouldn't have even mentioned it, but he did. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, so that we can see ourselves. Second dream is uh, so from the 14th of August, 1892. This is on page 123 in the English Tathkira. He says, I saw in my dream last night that Muhammad Begum, concerning whom a prophecy has been made, was sitting with some people in a village, a village rest house. And perhaps her perhaps her head was shaven, and she was naked, and she looked very repulsive. I said to her three times, The interpretation of your head being shaven is that your husband will die. Then I placed both my hands over her head, and again pronounced the same interpretation. At the same time, my wife, being Mahmoud's mother, saw in a dream that my marriage with Muhammad Begum had been performed and my wife had a document in her hand which specified that the dawah for the marriage was 1000 rupees some sweets were sent for some sweets were sent for and Muhammad Begum was seen standing near me now this uh, again it's, it shows Mirza Ghulam uh, dreaming of Muhammad Begum uh Obviously, I mean, it's quite, you know, yourself, I mean, it's not really nice when, when when a prophet of Allah, you know, especially a prophet coming within our religion, you know, sitting there telling you that this book, Tathkira, he believes in it like he believes in the Quran, like he believes in the Quran. And this dream, I just, these two dreams I just read to you, they are from Tathkira. So they're equivalent of Mirza's uh, Quran, Mirza's, you know, second Quran, if you like, because he puts it on a par with the Quran. He puts it as if it's the same level. So Mirza's second holy book, you know, and he sits there saying about, in the first room, about a beautiful red dress, you know, Muhammad Begum wearing a beautiful red dress, and the second one that she's naked, and he puts a hand, a head on her hand, and all this, on her head, sorry, and, you know, this is really, I'm sure you'll understand, this is not the standard of a prophet of Allah, certainly not a prophet within Islam, a prophet who knows, you know, about Islam, and knows about the, 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 the respect in Islam and respect for women and all this kind of thing. And this is not, by the way, this is not the only time where Mirza says such things. I mean, here he talks about a beautiful red dress and Muhammad Begum being naked in other places unrelated to this prophecy. But in other places he talks about having wet dreams and then he compares, you know, in our other video you can see him talking about having, uh, you know, the, the uh, how do you say, obviously, I don't know if any children listen to this, but, you know, ejaculation from the man, comparing that to humility, We've got a whole video on that uh, in our other videos you can check. You know, he always talks about these things and, and it's it gives you an overall image of him and him and the issue of, you know, intercourse or marital relations. It's, he's got some sort of weird, unacceptable, it's quite filthy actually. Uh, uh, he's drawn to it and, he, you know, it's, it's really unacceptable. And, you know, you ask yourself... What kind of really spiritual, deep spiritual man would sit there talking about this kind of thing? I'm sure you'll uh, you'll realize that it's really unacceptable stuff. Um, you know that uh, I think a lot of Ahmadis don't know that Mirza Ghulam threatened to divorce his own wife and disown his son uh, in relation to his 
this prophecy were basically uh, in Majmu'a Ashtiharat, volume 1, pages 219 to 221. Mirza uh, Ghulam uh, states in this notice that his son Sultan Ahmad, along with his mother, is opposing Mirza Ghulam. And that they are involved in trying to get Muhammad Begum married to another man. And in this, Mirza Ghulam uh, warns his son, Sultan Ahmed, uh, that if he does not stop, he will have no further relations with him. So he'll cut him off, he'll disown him. Uh, also, that if they don't stop their intention of getting Muhammad Begum married to someone else, then the, day, then the day of the nikah, he will cut his relations with his son, Sultan Ahmed, and on that day, he will divorce his mother as well. Uh, also, that if Mirza's other son, his name is Fazl Ahmed, does not divorce his wife, his wife being was the niece of Ahmed Beg, uh, when he hears the news of Muhammad Beg and Nikah with the other man, then he also will be disowned. So Mirza here wants his son Fazl Ahmed to divorce his wife. Uh, his wife is the niece of Ahmed Beg. On the day, as soon as he hears that Muhammad Begum has had her nikah, Fazl Ahmad is expected to divorce his wife. And he also was threatening Sultan Ahmad uh, to, that he will disown him. Uh, uh, because obviously he's, he's supposedly had a uh, hand, him and his mother had a hand in trying to assist or facilitate the marriage of Muhammad Begum to another man. Now, this, all of you people watching this video right now, you are clearly, your brain is thinking to yourself, this doesn't make sense. This is a prophecy that supposedly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Mirza, because he says that Allah told me this. Allah informed him of this. So, if Allah has informed you of it, then Allah will make sure it happens. Why is Mirza Ghulam having to resort to such desperate tactics to try and make sure that he he marries uh, Muhammad Begum uh, and that basically his prophecy doesn't look like it failed why would he do such things i mean as i said before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah the almighty can do whatever he wishes he can destroy mountains he can cause earthquakes to kill millions of people he can get great Many lives, he can do anything he wishes. That a marriage, to cause a marriage, to cause Mirza to get married, that's nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Mirza genuinely was from Allah, and he genuinely received this prophecy, it would not have been very difficult. It would not have been very difficult. And don't forget, you have to remember the key point is that Tathkira to Mirza was on the same level as the Quran. The Quran is Allah's word. Mirza saying Tathkira. Is like the Quran to him. So as I said, it's like Mirza's second Quran, this Tathkira. It's like, like his second Quran. He believes in it so firmly. So why on earth would he have to try to try to ruin his family's lives? Come on, he's, he wants to divorce his wife? Throw her in the street? Disown his son? And force his other son to get divorced? Why? All of this, Why? If you're a man of Allah, what kind of character, what kind of character are you showing here? Bring misery on your sons and your wife just so that you don't have to stand up and say, oh, I'm either a liar or I'm deluded. Sorry guys, I got it wrong. You don't want to stand up and say this, you try and ruin their lives. This says a lot about Mirza Ghulam's character. It's, it's, it's all, all of this, uh, you take all this on board and you also take, put this also on your plate and consider this that why would he sit there wishing such horrible, you know, wishing death on people, wishing death on, on Ahmed Beg, wishing death on, uh, I believe his name was Sultan, uh, the one who Muhammad Begum married, wishing death on all, all, all these people, and uh, also disasters, he said that disasters will befall Ahmed Beg, and then ultimately he will die within three years. Why are you doing all this kind of thing if you're a man of Allah, if you're a man of peace, if you're a man coming to rejuvenate Islam with the great principles and the great qualities of, Say, of, of, of Sayyidina Muhammad and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are you behaving like this? 
ordinary people, people who have no morals, who have, who are shameless, they act like this. Shameless people who have no morals, they don't hesitate in, in, in forcing their son to get divorced or divorcing their wife or disowning their other son. They have no qualms about that. That's because they're immoral people. They're not religious people. They're not godly people. So why is this man who's claiming to be a prophet, claiming to be of Allah, and you get, obviously Ahmadis get really confused because you see his, his, his poems and you see how much he, he states that he loves Sayyidina Muhammad and, that you, and you hear also in other areas where he's written that he's not a worldly person and he's not materialistic and he's, really, he's deeply lost in the love for Allah and deeply lost in the love, love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu But then this, you have to understand that that's the current image of Ahmadiyya. What I've been, me and my colleagues have put together for you today in this video, this is... These are his original writings. These are his original thoughts. From these writings, you can see his thought process. You can see the way he thinks. He, you know, this clearly shows that he's a man who has no problem in using anything possible to make sure something happens. Use anything, any, any, any sort of uh, tactic to make sure that Muhammad Begum gets married to him. And. All of you will understand and all of you inshallah will appreciate that this is not just a failed prophecy but it's a big marker, a big indicator of what this man's personality and his character was like. Now Ahmadiyya, the Ahmadiyya organization, they earlier in the video I said that yeah they, uh, they, you, you know, they, they tried to hint, no they tried to, sorry, they tried to uh, nitpick and say uh, no it didn't totally fail because Ahmed Beg, the father of Mirza, sorry, the father of Muhammad Begum, he did, he died, uh, I believe, within uh, only six months after Muhammad Begum got married to another man, obviously. Uh, now, as I say to you, you will not hear uh, the Ahmadi, the Ahmadi missionaries or, or whoever is explaining this point to you. They won't say to you that Ahmed Beg, his health was already very poor. They won't say to you that he already he, he breathed like a choking person, and they had a lot of stomach pains from the medic. The, the number of the, he, he take a lot of medicines and he had stomach pains from all the medicines he was taking. They won't tell you that stuff, because if they tell you that point, when they say to you uh, that he died in six months, you're going to be like, well, so what? He was sick, so they won't tell you that he already had health issues. So that it seems as if, when they tell you, it seems as if Allah caused him to die. In line with this prophecy, that's what this is the the, the version that you are going to receive from the Ahmadi organization, and the reason I know it, and all of my colleagues know it, is because we were given that version too. They told us the same thing. So you're going to hear this point from them, and uh, they're going to make it out that oh my gosh, you know God partially did this, partially fulfilled the prophecy, and uh, that uh, her husband. He he actually didn't die, by the way. He didn't die, although Mirza said he would die within two and a half years. And they will tell you he didn't die because uh, something along the lines of he apologized, or he did some sort of some sort of uh, tawbah or something like that. And whether he apologized or whether he didn't apologize, the as I said, the meat on the plate, the most important part of this pro the prophecy is that Mirza will marry Muhammad Begum. All the other stuff, or that you know, uh, that this uh, her husband will die within two and a half years, and the father—that's decoration. Get to the main, the main part of the the the, the uh, you know the main part of your meal, so to speak, is the meat. Get to the meat right now. The most important part is that Mirza was supposed to marry Muhammad Begum, and he didn't. So when the, the Ahmadi missionaries or whatever these people, whoever talks to you and tries to explain this to you. Whenever they say to you, oh, he said, sorry, you know, you know, the Sultan guy apologized or whatever. So God uh, showed some mercy on him and didn't, he didn't need to kill him and all this kind of thing. Ask yourself, the bottom line is, Mirza still did not marry Muhammad Begum. This prophecy failed. And what does Mirza say in so many places? He says that, that his prophecies are the touchstone of his truthfulness. So his, his, his prophecies... Because he says that these are what Allah tells him. Uh, Allah tells him these prophecies. So then Allah makes the prophecy come true. Which means that he is from God. Because God has made these things happen for him. So that's why Mirza says his prophecies are the touchstone of his truthfulness. And he's got so many failed prophecies. 
but you're going to hear the Ahmadiyya missionaries or the Ahmadiyya murabbis or one of their imams or whatever. They'll say to you, oh, you're, you're, you're such, uh, you seek negative in everything. You're always looking for the negative. Uh, you, you're forgetting all the things that were fulfilled, all the signs that were fulfilled. He's got hundreds of thousands of signs that prove he's true. One of them is that Mirza one day had a, you know, he received some sort of revelation uh, that he would lose some, he would suffer a loss on a journey. And he did indeed lose, lose, suffer a loss. And he really was thinking that, wow, this uh, shows that Allah's on his side. He lost a handkerchief. Yes, he lost a handkerchief. You probably think, oh, his friend died or he lost his money or he lost, you know, something valuable. You know, when you think Allah's telling you that you're going to suffer a loss, you think it's something serious. He just lost a handkerchief. And he says, that's, that's fulfilled. I lost a handkerchief. You know, yesterday I lost like uh, I lost quite a few pounds yesterday. I don't know where it went. I mean, that's even more expensive than a handkerchief. I can buy like hundreds of handkerchiefs with the money that I lost yesterday. Many of you have lost expensive items in your life as well. He just lost a handkerchief, and he claims that that proves that he's true. It's preposterous. It really is preposterous, and you've got to uh, you've got to feel sorry for Mirza Ghulam actually, because this either deluded or. Or he's either deluded or he's a liar, straight up liar, or he's just deluded. You gotta feel sorry for him. You know, he's he's going around writing these kind of things and, and basically now after his death and, and and you know, as I say now, anybody can pick up his books and actually have a good look at what his character's like. And you feel sorry for him, you know? The the Ahmadis out there, you really you are sucked into the modern uh the modern image of Ahmadiyya at the moment. You're sucked into that. You're not. You're not uh, being given the original writings of Mirza Ghulam. Um, you're really thinking that you're following true Islam. Uh, the things that you are told, uh, a lot of it is is true Islam. A lot of the things you're told, oh yeah, pray like this and do your extra nawafil praise and all that, that. Of course, that's true Islam. That's not Ahmadiyya stuff. That's normal Islamic stuff. But if you want to talk about true Ahmadiyya, I know what I'm saying. I said true Ahmadiyya, not true Islam. If you want to talk about true Ahmadiyya. You need to look at what Mirza's written. And if you want to be a true Ahmadi, you need to follow what Mirza's written. And the thing is, if you follow what Mirza's written, and you want to be a true Ahmadi according to what Mirza's written, you will find that you've left Islam. If you take Mirza's views, and you see what he's written, you will find that you've left Islam. And I'm telling you, you have to see not just what he's written in his early days, because in his early days, like in the 1880s and you know late 70s and such, he used to write things that were totally acceptable. Nothing wrong with it at all. You wouldn't think there's anything wrong with that. It's the later, the, the, the later writings, the things that he's written in his books later on. That's the stuff that gets you thinking, oh my God, this man has departed from Islam. He's left Islam, his thoughts, thoughts about God, you know, uh, thoughts about Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, you know, uh, as if you see my our other videos, you'll understand what we're talking about. All these things, you will see that this man has left Islam. So if you want to be a true Ahmadi, you're actually not a true Muslim. Because you'd have left true Islamic belief and you've gone into heretical beliefs. Things that have no place in Islam and they deserve to be in a whole new religion. A whole new religion. Uh, because they can't be grafted onto Islam. They can't be glued onto Islam and you still tell me this is Islam. You know, you, Islam, alhamdulillah... Is a nice clean glass of water. Don't come and put salt, pepper, all sorts of spices and tell me it still tastes like water. It's not water. You've ruined it. So that's not Islamic, Mirza's, uh, uh, his, uh, a lot of his beliefs and his writings. Um, we've got uh, in Aina Kamalat Islam, uh, page 326, that's in Rahani Khazan, volume 5. You know, I want to leave you with the final thing, which is about which Mirza says. He says, isn't it true? That the prophecy of a liar can never be fulfilled. Uh, this is the teaching in the Quran and the Torah. So Mirza himself says, and as, as I said to you, he writes many times this kind of thing in his books. But he says here, isn't it true that the prophecy of a liar can never be fulfilled? Well, Mirza's prophecy about Muhammad i Begum was never fulfilled. Mirza says himself that if the prophecy is not fulfilled, you're a liar. So Mirza's prophecy never got fulfilled. So was he a liar then? As I say, my opinion and our colleagues, they all say either liar, some say deluded. So but he, with his wording here, Mirza Ghulam is a liar. 
you have to remember this and be strong please you know if you if you are going to face any of these uh, murabbis or missionaries or anyone who claims to be very knowledgeable ahmadiyya you have to be strong minded don't let them wash you around and push you around in the conversation and confuse you and and you and then you forget that the end the bottom line is he never married Muhammad Begum, so that prophecy failed. They're going to try their best to really divert you down some other roads of the person she married, repented or whatever, and said, sorry, so he lived. Look at her father, he died. You have to remember the crux of the matter. That Muhammad Begum, she didn't marry him. And Mirza Ghulam died, and she still didn't marry him, and she still carried on living. She said she lived, and she was perfectly fine. So remember that Mirza Ghulam said that the prophecy, if, it's, if the prophecy fails, you're a liar. His prophecy failed. Therefore, according to Mirza Ghulam, Mirza Ghulam himself is a liar. Now, we will be making other videos, inshallah, about other prophecies and other signs uh, that you know Mirza tries to claim that you know signs of his truthfulness. Please stay tuned, inshallah. We've got a lot of stuff to uh, uh, to follow. Uh, but actually, I've just remembered one final point. Um, uh, uh, Mirza Ghulam something to say about his character. I mean, how disgusting is it when Mirza Ghulam carries on pursuing Muhammad Begum when she was already married? She was already married. Let it go. She was already married. How filthy and disgusting is that? That he carried on saying, no, she's going to marry me as a widow or a virgin. Doesn't matter. Okay, she got married now. She's, still, she's going to marry me as a widow and all this kind of thing. How filthy is that to say such a thing? He had no regard for the, 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 the man. She's taken now. She is taken. And by the way, guys, this is only what, 120 years ago or something like that. 120, 100, yeah, approximately. It's not a thousand years ago or something. So someone could say, oh, well, things were different back then. No, they weren't that different, really. Mirza Ghulam was consciously pursuing someone who's already married. I mean, what disrespect, disgusting. How un-Islamic is that, that you are... Still trying to marry someone who's already married. You have to really think about this. All this shows what kind of character this Mirza Ghulam was. You know, you also have to ask yourself as well. Obviously, us, me and my colleagues, and anybody who's read uh, deeply about Mirza's writings, obviously we don't believe Mirza's from Allah. He's not from Allah at all. So obviously when he says that Allah told him, we don't believe that either. So when he says that Allah told him that he he uh, he has to get married to Muhammad Begum in order to... Uh, finish up the land uh, uh, issue of uh, Ahmed Big, then obviously we don't believe that's from God anyway. So it's possible that he made that up. So it's very possible that he made that up, that he basically wanted to marry his daughter, but he said, oh, in his brain he thought, what are you going to do for me? So, uh, you know, I'll do this land thing for you, but you give me your daughter. This is effectively what he wrote. And when you read his books, you realize it's such jumbled up stuff. You, you see, I mean, this quote, uh, these areas in, in, in Arabic that I told you where, where he talks, to, where he refers to Ahmed Beg uh, as having as breathing like a choke, choking person. He's got stomach pains, that kind of thing. He's got, uh, Mirza Ghulam has actually taken parts, small little parts of, 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 of some ayahs, you know, uh, from some surahs and stuff. And he stuffs it into the sentence. Trying to make it look like some divinity, some divine thing, like it's from God or something, is is hideous. This tactic probably worked on a huge amount of people in India at the time because there was a high illiteracy rate, and a lot of people probably they just thought, oh God, he's written Arabic. This guy's amazing, and he's got stuff written in Farsi as well, and he's in Urdu as well, and he's got some some sort of revelations and things in English, which uh, you know you can find in Tathkira as well. They're actually written in English, so. You actually, they, they were dumbfounded. You know, they were like, they were stricken by this guy thinking, wow, that's amazing. But when you read it now, you think, what a bunch of nonsense. Nonsense. He just goes round and round and round and round, several pages talking, and then he gets to the point that he's trying to say, which is, I'll do the land thing for you as long as you give me your daughter. And if you don't, you're going to die within three years, blah, 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 as, as I've mentioned earlier. Now, inshallah, you guys, all of you, inshallah, uh, there will be a lot of uh, more videos coming up, but please review this video. If you need to watch it again, look at the screenshots, take all of it in, and uh, be well versed with it, inshallah. Because if you're, if you need to talk about this with some Ahmadis to explain to them 
or if they try, they think they're going to explain it to you, well, then you've got all the evidence in front of you and you can answer them, inshallah. Uh, Mirza Ghulam's, this is the end of the video. Uh, just to conclude, Mirza Ghulam's prophecy failed with Muhammad Begum. He said himself, if your prophecy fails, well, then you're a liar. So he's called himself a liar. So Mirza Ghulam was a liar. Uh, inshallah, please stay tuned for other videos. May Allah always guide us to a straight path. Inshallah, always give us the strength to stay on a straight path and to... Uh, answer all the the uh, misguided people who try to misguide us. Uh, this is Osama Sayyid from Islam after Ahmadiyya on behalf of myself and my colleagues. We say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.